Today I'm driving a Mustang, but it's not just any Mustang. This Mustang doesn't have a V8 engine. It doesn't have a six cylinder engine or a four cylinder engine. In fact, the Mustang that I'm driving today doesn't have an engine at all, and it isn't a muscle car. This is an electric SUV. My name is Omar, and today I'm test driving the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. So everyone keeps talking about how this isn't a Mustang and how Ford shouldn't have used the Mustang name for the Mach-E, but hey, blame it on marketing. The thing is that Tesla has built such a strong brand name for itself that Ford needed to come out with a strong brand to compete with Tesla, and there's no stronger brand for Ford than the Mustang. The Mach-E here competes with the Tesla Model Y, and after driving around for a couple of days, I can definitely say that Ford has a clear winner on their hands. It's not far off from the Model Y in terms of pricing and range, but when it comes to interior quality, and overall design, the Mach-E is definitely the clear winner. When it comes to competing with the Model Y Performance, Ford is working on a Mustang Mach-E GT and GT Performance Edition, and that will arrive a little bit later. That said, let me give you a tour of this electric Mustang, and then I'll give you my opinion on what I think about it. But before I do, make sure you hit subscribe because it's good for you just like this car is good for the environment. And hit the like button. Now, as always, before we get into everything else, let's take a look at some of the cool and interesting things that you should know about the new Ford Mustang Mach-E. Let's kick things off by getting in and out of the Mach-E because it is pretty interesting to get inside. All you have to do is walk up and push this little button right here. The door will open very slightly and you pull on this handle to open it the rest of the way and hop inside. Once you're inside to get out, you just pull on this tiny little latch right here to open the door and hop outside. That's probably one of the coolest looking door handles that I've seen on the inside of a car. By the way, the back door doesn't have a handle to pull it the rest of the way, so you just push the button, stick your hand right in here, and then open the door. And don't worry, there is a fail safe here so no one slams the door in your shirt. Once you hit the button, it locks into place so you can't close it until you swing it all the way open and then shut it, and the same thing happens in the front. Now, Ford has spent a lot of time on the sounds and animations of the Mach-E, so once you get inside, and well, once you open the door and get inside, there's a cool little animation that plays across both screens and then once you hit start it'll make that sound and then once you're done driving the Mach-E you turn it off it'll do that little cool sound. Now even though the Mustang Mach-E is named after an animal this thing is a completely animal free product. What does that mean? Well it means that the Mach-E is vegan and no animals were harmed in the making of this EV. The seats here are extremely comfortable and they look like they are made out of real leather, but they're not. They're actually vinyl or pleather. But yeah, the Mach-E is so vegan that it even won a PETA eCal friendly award for using all vegan materials inside the cabin. By the way, love that name of the award eco and eCal. Get it? All right, moving on. Now, while you're being eCal friendly, you can still have some fun because this is an electric vehicle and it doesn't have anything under the front except a frunk. And once you pop it open, you have 4.7 cubic feet. But the coolest thing about the frunk here is that you can use it for tailgating. You can actually fill this area up with ice and once it starts melting, you have a drain hole right there so the water can seep through. You also have cup holders to get the party going. Now let's talk about how much the Mach-E cost. You have a couple of trim levels to pick from, starting with the base select model, which starts at $42,895. And then later you will have the Mach-E GT, which is the high performance Mach-E, and that will start at $60,500. My test model here is the Mach-E premium with all wheel drive and the extended battery, which will give you a total range of 270 miles on a full charge. And as tested here, you're looking at over $56,000. Keep in mind, you will be eligible for a $7,500 federal tax credit so you can save some money off the prices that I just gave you right here. That being said, the Mach-E Premium is really where you want to be unless you're hanging on for the high-performance Mach-E GT. The Premium model will give you everything from the Select model and it will add on Active Park Assist. You'll also get a 360-degree camera, you'll get heated front seats, and a heated steering wheel, which come in super handy on a cold day like today. You get memory seats and you also get a 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. That sounds amazing. You also get a huge panoramic roof with UV coating and it lights up this cabin quite a bit. It makes it feel very spacious in here. And the premium model also upgrades the base 18 inch wheels to these awesome 19 inch wheels. Now let's talk about power and performance. Power for the Mach-E comes from two motors powered by an 88 kilowatt battery and you get 346 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque. And just in case you had any doubts, there's the word horsepower right here next to the outlet lid 
which, you know, it's kind of a reach that, hey, this is a Mustang and it has horsepower. Either way, that setup will give you the ability to do zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds with a top speed of 124 miles an hour. Now that's pretty much on par with the Tesla Model Y, the fastest Mach-E GT Performance Edition is still on the way and that will do zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, which is right on par with the Tesla Model Y performance. Now, when it comes to the drive modes, you have Engage, Whisper, and Unbridled. And that basically means normal, quiet, and sport. Now, when it comes to fuel economy, my test model here is the premium all-wheel drive with the extended battery, and that will give you 96 MPG E-City and 84 MPG E highway. And then once you get inside, there is a screen here that will tell you all about your trip info and tell you where your energy went, whether you use a certain percentage on your route, climate, accessories, and other stuff. Depending on which Mach-E you go for, the range ranges from 211 miles to 300 miles. The Mach-E GT will carry a range of 235 miles for the Performance Edition and 250 miles for the regular GT. Now let's take a closer look at the design. Which one looks better, the Ford Mustang Mach-E or the Tesla Model Y? I'm gonna go with the Mach-E, but let me know in the comments below which one you think looks better. Of course, Ford calling this electric SUV a Mustang has some people pretty pissed off, but this thing looks pretty Mustangly stylish and more stylish than a lot of the EVs that you see out there. The Mach-E has a lot of cool Mustang design elements, including a powerful long hood, which Mustangs are pretty well known for. The headlamps are inspired by the Mustang and they look super sharp. Of course, the taillights is where the Mustangness really shines with a similar design and the sequential turn signals that we see in all Mustangs. The side profile of the Mach-E is also pretty aggressive. I never thought I would like the absence of door handles, but I have to say it gives it a very smooth and clean look. One of the main highlights of the exterior design is the roof. When you view it from the side, it looks like the Mach-E has has a really sharp sloping fastback style. But when you look a little closer, you'll see that the roof is actually higher. Ford has done some really nice trickery by painting the top part black and making the sloping part body colored. Pretty cool illusion right there. It also has a pretty muscular rear end. And again, you have the cool sequential indicators that Mustangs are well known for. When it comes to electric vehicles, the absence of a grill really bothers me. I personally think EVs look super awkward from the front end. Take the Model Y and the Model 3, for example. There's just a giant blank space in the front. The Mach-E here makes use of that blank space with a nice Mustang Pony logo. And I think that's a really nice touch. By the way, I'm going to point out something that you will be unable to see once you see it. Check out the bar handle mustache that surrounds the logo, which is really a shout out to the Mustang horse collar design, but it looks like a bar handle mustache to me. Now, before we move on, let's check out the cargo capacity. You have the kick to open future here on the Mach-E. And once you get it open behind the second row, you have 30 cubic feet. And with the second row folded, you have 60 cubic feet, which is plenty of space for anything that you want to put in there. Hop inside the new Mustang Mach-E and it might be difficult for you to tell that you're sitting in a Ford. The overall interior is pretty well designed with a sleek and modern feel. But just like the outside beyond the modern and sleek feel of an EV, there are still some Mustang design cues in here. Especially right here on the dash, you have the double brow design. In fact, that's really the only Mustang feel that you have in here. And that's because the interior here in the Mach-E in terms of design and quality is much better than the Mustang. Everything in here feels super, super nice to the touch, the dash, the steering, the center console, the door panels, everything in here feels super nice to the touch. Ford has done an outstanding job. My favorite design element though is this Bang & Olufsen soundbar that runs across the dash over here as well. And the sound system itself is a really, really solid sound system. Now let's hop in the back seat and check out the rear legroom. You have 38.1 inches of rear legroom and that's quite a bit. I'm about six foot tall, that's my seating position. As you can see, I still have plenty of room. And since this is an EV, you have a flat four, so three adults can sit back here with no problems at all. Other than that, you got two vents back here and you have a USB-C charging port and a USB port, so that's pretty cool. So you can stay charged back here. Now let's talk about some tech and the screenage game going on over here. You have a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster display and it's not packed with a lot of info like modern gauge clusters. All you have here is your range, your battery life, your speedometer and your gear select. And I think that's awesome. That's all the info that you need right there in front of you. Now Tesla has taken a lot of crap for not having a gauge cluster in front of the driver's view and I think this is a really simple and cool solution. 
By the way, this section right here features some sensors and cameras to make sure that you're looking forward because there's an update coming to the Maki that will feature some really cool self-driving tech. When it comes to the infotainment, the Sync 4A system is housed in a giant 15.5 inch touchscreen display that has a lot going on here, but it's not that overbearing. If you split it up into sections, you'll get used to it pretty quick. The top part here is just your profile section and shortcuts to whatever you want to access quickly. This middle section is basically all your info. And if you go into settings, it'll list all your settings right here. It's also the section where you can view this giant navigation. That's pretty cool. And you can search for local charging stations. And then the bottom part here is basically your climate control. You tap this button here and it'll bring up a larger screen and you can mess around with your climate control. But yeah, overall it's pretty smooth. You do have Apple CarPlay, you do have Android Auto and it's a pretty easy system. It does slow down here and there a bit, but it's not that bad. Now, before I give you my opinion on how it is to drive the Mustang Mach-E, let me point out a few random things that I love to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front, and then you have two in the back for the rear passengers. The storage game is pretty strong. You have storage right here and you can close that up if you don't want anybody to see what's inside. And then you have some storage right down there. So that's pretty cool. Here are the keys to the Mustang Mach-E. Not that exciting because Ford wants you to use the Ford Pass app to access and unlock and start the Mustang Mach-E because that's how new things are done and keys are of the past. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside, it beeped because I had the keys in my pocket and not inside the car. Pretty solid. When it comes to charging, you have a wireless charger right here and you have a USB-C and a USB port right there. And then in the back, you also have a USB-C port and a USB port if you're gonna sit in the back to charge your devices. And of course, we have to hear the indicator and the horn sound indicator first. Just like the good old Ford indicator and the horn sound. Pretty solid. And now that I've given you a tour of this electric Mustang SUV, let me give you my opinion on what I think about it. All right, let's get to it. So this thing is pretty exciting, but is it Mustang exciting? The thing is that if you're gonna call it a Mustang, it should behave a little bit like a Mustang. Zero to 60 for the one that I'm driving here, it comes in just 4.8 seconds. And when it comes to handling, this thing can be a little bit fun to throw into the corners. So I'm just going 55 miles an hour on a pretty safe road. I'm just gonna hit the gas all the way down. And that's the unbridled mode and the unbridled mode sound. Pretty nice. Very, very responsive. Of course, we have to wait for the Mustang Mach-E GT to feel the Mustangness of this car. The Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition will do zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, which is identical to the Tesla Model Y Performance. So I'm pretty excited for that one. Now, for those of you that know me personally, you know that I'm not the EV type. I'm excited about EVs and they're definitely our future. I don't have anything against EVs. I just think they don't fit my lifestyle and they probably won't until you can go from zero to 100% charge within a few minutes. Now I know there are EVs out there that will go from 10 to 80% charge fairly quickly. The Tesla Model Y will do it in 20 minutes. The Mach-E here will do it in about 40 minutes. But that's like me going to the gas station and saying, can I get 20 regular please? I've worked way too hard to be able to fill my gas tank within a few minutes and not worry about it for a few days. Really the only thing that will make me consider buying an EV as my daily driver would be a shorter charge time or a really long range so I don't have to worry about charging it for a couple of days. Now, if your commute is short and you don't drive as much, an EV is the perfect solution for you. And if you're considering buying a Tesla Model Y, I highly recommend test driving the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And if you want something quicker, if you're looking for the Model Y performance, hang on for the Mustang Mach-E GT or GT Performance Edition. By the way, the amount of thumbs ups and smiles that I've received in this car has been more than any other car that I've tested in 2020. So. I guess I'm pretty cool for caring about the environment. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Peace. That instant acceleration can get very, very addictive. By the way, when the GT comes out, please don't use Unbridled as the sport mode name. Make it GT, GT or sport, or even call it track, you know, but Unbridled, I don't like that one.